Public trust is a lot like Humpty Dumpty sitting up out there on that wall where everyone can see and admire him till he jumps off, kills himself, shattering himself into a million bits down below. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott. And if that's not quite the way you remember Humpty Dumpty, it's not quite the way I remember it either. However, we have seen public trust just absolutely kill itself in these last several months of the almost a year now, oh dear God, of the Wuhan flu pandemic. Uh, gentlemen, I've been collecting these stories for a few weeks now as uh, Glenn Reynolds, who I, I blog with, I co-blog with him at, over at Insponent.com, has been reminding us uh, a couple of times a week now that when it comes to fighting a pandemic, when it comes to really almost any public health issue, public trust is the only thing the authorities really have to help fight something like this. And once it's shattered, it's very difficult to get back. And what we've seen in this case is, like my stupid version of Humpty Dumpty, public officials shattering their own public trust. Uh, Bill, I'm going to start with you. There is a, a new report in New York Magazine, came out, I think, Monday of this week. It's written by Nicholson Baker. Now, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to read the whole report, but I did read Jim Garrity's write-up of it in National Review on Tuesday morning. And Garrity says Baker is pretty blunt about the fact that many scientists have had suspicions that the Wuhan flu originated in a lab in Wuhan, China, and was released accidentally or inadvertently. However, these scientists did not want to speak publicly about the possibility of a lab accident while the Trump administration was touting the same idea. Uh, Bill, how do scientists, how do researchers, how do public officials get public trust back after they've decided that orange man bad is more important than public health? Well, they don't get it back and they don't deserve it back. And of all the things, the catastrophes that this uh, pandemic has caused, uh, the single great benefit from it is it's shown the American people just how corrupt uh, and incompetent and um, and mendacious uh, the uh, so-called experts are on this. And, and that's all the example you need. So apparently these well-respected virologists have come to the same conclusion that many of us did, I would say, well, the lockdown in California here happened on March 18th, and I'm pretty sure I was talking about that on the Chronosphere Lounge, certainly before the end of March, that the evidence was practically overwhelming that this was in fact the case. And of course, that's just a lunatic conspiracy theory because we have to get this guy out of office because he's actually hurting China. He's actually actually standing up for America and putting some real pressure on China. And so we can't have anybody backing up the obvious fact that this is what happened. The Wuhan Virology Lab is 300 or 400 feet away from the so-called wet market where this thing apparently, where they claim it broke out. That's their number one virology lab in the country, and that is the epicenter of an outbreak, and they want to tell us that it had nothing to do with it? Okay. So they go into the Wuhan wet market, where presumably this came from. We know it was a bat virus. We know there were no bats sold in the Wuhan uh, wet market where they had this, and the nearest bats were 900 kilometers away, but we'll let that go too. So then the Chinese go in there, and they completely sterilize the uh, the entire wet market. They hose the whole thing down with um, with bleach and utterly destroy whatever evidence there may have been of how this thing got into the human uh, population, which is valuable information to know. And then finally, when it's all said and done, the Communist Party of China basically says, well, we have a real serious problem here, so we're not going to allow anybody to fly from Wuhan to other parts of China, but we will allow them to continue to fly into Los Angeles at a rate of 5,000 a day and all around the rest of the world as well, which to me is is that's where the culpability is, Steve. And and you you can go as far as the fact that now we are locking down travel to China and we're not locking it down to the rest of the world. That's where the culpability begins with China. Now, anybody who was dealing with the American health crisis in America would have been rather keen to make that point, I think. And they would have been rather keen to point out all the supplies that have been bought up and hoarded and the orders to buy up medical supplies on the part of the, that we saw on video all around, all of it, all of it. None of them deserve our trust. And nobody in the government seems to either. And this is, this is the result of, of this overreach and this power grab. And Two weeks to flatten the curve made sense. There was sense behind that idea. And once they realized they could get us to do what they wanted us to do, 
they just lost their minds. So it then became, well, three months in order to make sure that it doesn't spread. Then it's, well, we can't go back out again until we have a vaccine. And then, well, we can't go back out again until everybody's vaccinated. And then we can't go back out again until there are no new cases. And on and on and on we go. They don't deserve our trust. I'm glad it's destroyed. And and we should this is how we should be viewing all of these people from now on. And if we'd been viewing them this way in the past, we wouldn't have been in this kind of trouble. Uh, great points. All of that. I just the only thing I would possibly I could possibly add to that, Bill, is the fact that uh, progressive publications like New York Magazine are giving credence to this idea now that the election is over. You wouldn't have seen this come out last March or last September or last October. Uh, Scott, let's go over to you. Uh, Billy Binion over at Reason Magazine writes that uh, Andrew Cuomo's vaccination or vaccine distribution rules are a threat to public health. You know, talk about breaking the public trust here. He writes that New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has given hospitals a conundrum. Fail to use all of your COVID va COVID-19 vaccines within seven days of receipt. In other words, if you don't distribute everything you get within a week, and these are you now limited shelf life vaccines, it's a hundred thousand dollar fine for not using his vaccines. Okay, well, we'll get those out the door as quickly as possible, right? However, if you vaccinate someone out of the state designated order, that's a million dollar fine. So if you have leftover vaccine and nobody on the pre-approved list left to give it to, you can either throw it out or give it to the wrong person and pay a million dollar fine to the state of New York. How's, uh, how's that for a trust builder? Well, I, I reject the notion that we should trust any of these people, either politicians or scientists. Uh, politicians, it's almost a, a proverb that we should not trust them. Uh, scientists, uh, I, I think people have gotten a weird view of scientists, like because somebody's wearing a lab coat, suddenly they're trustworthy. Science, scientists are the people who practice a process of making a thesis and then testing that thesis and then publishing your data and making some analysis of it and drawing some conclusions and then exposing that data, the analysis and the conclusions to a world of skeptical colleagues who will go in there and try to falsify what you've done. It's, it's a process. It's not something where you go, oh, well, that guy's a scientist, therefore I can trust him. The only thing I really want to be able to trust with a scientist is that they're following a scientific process. And you can't always trust yes. them to do that either because people are people. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has his biases. Each individual has a tendency to want to verify what he already believes to be true to be so. Um, that's not a, to excuse that behavior. That's just common human experience. What it says is that we should be cautious. Caveat emptor, emptor, let the buyer beware. The same way you read a newspaper or watch a newscast should be, well, those are interesting words that they've just strung together and laid before me. I wonder which ones of them are true or verifiable. <laughs> and there are some things that will never be verifiable to the average consumer when you hear something a politician says or something a scientist said. But I think you need to hold those kinds of facts lightly in your hand and not say, well, you know, Mr. Politician Cuomo said it, or Mr. Politician Trump said it, or Mr. Dr. Fauci said it. Um, none of those things should be the ultimate arbiters of how you behave in this life. You've kind of got to take it all in from the marketplace, make the best decision you can, you can with the facts that you have at the time that you have them, and realize that there's a fairly good chance that some of your decisions are going to be wrong, and some of them will actually cause positive harm either to yourself or to others. Um, now, as far as Cuomo setting these fines, uh, first of all, the idea that a governor could unilaterally establish uh, fines for something it flies in the face of any kind of a so-called democratic process uh, with a representative government. Um, so if I were a New York legislator, I'd be immediately saying, hey, we can bring this up for a vote on the floor, but you know, just the governor say so is not enough. And, and number two, what, what does Governor Cuomo think of these heroes of the health profession, these people he has lauded and celebrated for low these many months who are these, these people who are putting themselves in harm's way in order to save you. What he says is, you can't trust them to give you a life-saving vaccine without a government sword hanging over their heads. What does that say about his trust in that profession? Indeed. Uh, <laughs> it gets worse, gentlemen, believe it or not. I don't know if you remember this, but during the presidential election campaign, 
Joe Biden back in September, and I think he repeated it again, or in August and repeated it again in September, said he'd be wary of any uh, vaccine that Donald Trump uh, uh, was promoting. And Kamala Harris said virtually the same thing also in September, that she wouldn't take a vaccine because Donald Trump told her to. She, she, would, she would take a vaccine if, uh, if she thought other people had told her and, and politicized this important medical issue. And of course, the vaccines that were developed under the Trump administration, uh, Harris and Biden both got their shots after the election was held. Go figure. Uh, you might be thinking, oh, hypocritical politicians, there's nothing new to that. But there is something here. This, this has real world consequences. There was a case, I just read about this on, uh, on Monday night in, uh, in Wisconsin. There's a pharmacist named Steven Brandenburg. He's uh, more or less admitted to this, so I won't bother saying alleged, destroyed something like 500 doses of the vaccine because he believes that it's dangerous. And where did he get that idea? Well, it's no small stretch that he got that idea from the very people whose decisions we're supposed to be able to trust as the public. So I don't know how to put this Humpty Dumpty back together to you. That's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. We're trying to get the facts out to you as the very best we can. So I'd like to remind you that this kind of content needs your kind of support. If you're not a member, visit BillWhittle.com. Hit the join button or just hit the one-time donation button. We could really use your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.